Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to our weekly podcast. I'm CC. We got Philip here, Brent, Minner back there. Hey. Good to have you guys with us. We have uh, got some things that we're excited about talking about. First and foremost is going to be family night. It's open at nine o'clock. Dinner or not dinner or not dinner or not dinner or not dinner. Coming up. Tomorrow, tomorrow, August 17th, here at John 316 Ministries. So type in your uh, GPS there, 75 Home Road, and just come on down. Okay. Uh, it's open, it's open at 4.30. Yeah. How much does it cost to come? It's free. <laughs> oh, man, y'all got to watch this blooper video that we have. We'll tag it in right here. Introduce this. Okay. And you're, do and you're doing the rest. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Philip and CC here. Free, free, free. Here with John 316 Ministries. Free, yeah. Free. Some other ministries uh, to also Good. perform. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. And let's make sure we get this house free. I think if we talk about it too much before we do it, it has a counter effect. Free, 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 we have a William Wallace. We, we, do. Do. we yeah. just accepted him. We yeah. just accepted him. We have him. our very own William Wallace. Yeah, but not that one. You know how William Wallace yelled freedom, and Philip just continually and repetitively yells free or We're taking notes on very. that. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, see? <laughs> Okay, so we're excited about it. The gates open, like Brent said, 430. Uh, at 4.30 tomorrow. Um, everything's free. We're feeding everybody fish. Um, having some praise and worship music by not only our band, by uh, Jennifer Tarwater and In His Wings, um, Miranda Childers and New Hope Refuge, and then Julie Boswell with... Uh, Breaking Boss, Missouri. Yes. Missouri. Yeah. So we're excited about it. It's going to be a good time. We've talked to a lot of you about it. Um, we've gotten a lot of favorable responses, a lot of people that say they are coming. So we're looking forward to seeing you guys. Um, what else can we say about tomorrow? Well, I can say that the ones that are coming... You're in for a treat because you get entered in to win a small four-wheeler. Uh, a really nice small four-wheeler. In fact, one that Philip is trying to rig the drawing for so his, his girls can get it. But <laughs> that's not true. I heard completely you say Completely true. I mean... Look like you were about to say that's not completely true. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're that's gonna, not true at all. I'm not even in here. We'll make sure that Philip has nothing to do with the drawing um, <laughs> this weekend. But it, it, is, a it one, is nice, though. It's a 125. Um, it runs on premium gasoline. And um, uh, it's camouflage, which is a general neutral color. You know, anybody needs a camouflage four-wheeler. Um, and we would love... And we look forward to giving that away to somebody that, that would um, be able to use it or bless somebody... Uh, with it. So it's going to be a fun night. Um, what are you guys looking forward to about tomorrow night? Well, I like I like seeing um, I like watching the, the the body of Christ at work. Um, you know, you got you got Minner and Eric in the sound room. You got Philip uh, out back in between everything in between Brian and John Britt. Uh, <laughs> then you got CC in between Philip and John Britt <laughs> and and Brian and and it, it just. And being able to just watch it, uh, be a witness, you know, it makes me feel like, um, you know, the servants knew in, in John chapter 2 what Jesus was doing, you know, or John chapter 3, no, John 2, uh, what Jesus was doing, he, he turned wine into water, not that we're going to do that, or water into wine, but not that we're doing that, but, you know, it said that the servants knew that the miracle had happened, what miracle had taken place, so that being said, uh, to sit back on, uh, not necessarily the sidelines, but I'm from person to person and shaking hands and doing all these different things. Uh, I get to see exactly every crew that's out there and what they're doing and, and what it, what goes into John 316 Ministries to make it to where we can host, you know, a thousand people coming. You know, it doesn't just come, it doesn't just happen overnight. Minter, be sure to tell me to quit hitting the table if you need to. Oh, you're good. But, yeah, I, I, I know, I do too. Um, so, <laughs> those things that week one. <laughs> uh, the, the ministry doesn't just 
have people show up and the fish is already cooked and the parking lot's ready to be parked in and people just park in the right spot. You know, that doesn't just happen. Uh, it, it takes Perry Ross being out there at 3 o'clock because gates open at 4.30. It takes, um, it takes Joshua out there hobbling around, making sure Perry has everything he needs. It, it takes Devin with the safety vest on. It, it takes us all um, to be able to do the things that we do. And the cool thing is, is um, you know, families. Mm -hmm. That's it. Get an opportunity to see their loved one serve, uh, to spend time with their loved one in a healthy environment, not focused on what that guy can get from his family, but on what he can do to show them that his life has changed. And that's that's my favorite part of family night. It is, and, I, and I've gotten, you and I both this week have gotten to uh, call everybody mm -hmm. um, and invite them to come, and it's been... It's been a great experience just hearing the excitement in everybody's voice that has, you know, um, responded that they will be here. And they're, you can tell they're, they're hanging on every word, you know, wanting to know how their loved one's doing here. And they'll get the chance to see um, them in person tomorrow night and just the restoration that takes place. The kids that get to come up and be with their parents, you know, um, I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 what it's all about is the families. Um, Coming out and, and seeing their loved one, the change in them. Um, some of these people are, are not even off blackout yet. And so the family, get, this is going to be their first time out seeing uh, their loved one uh, not strung out on drugs. Right. Alcohol. Not really know what to expect. Yeah, not knowing, yeah. yeah. But then getting here and seeing there's a there's a glow to them. A light. You know, uh, it's uh, the, the love that's been shown to their loved ones and they get to, you know, it, it's pouring out of them. Yeah. So. To, to see that and their, um, you know, the glow kids, I think, seeing their dad and their mom. Uh, yeah. And then being excited about the four wheeler. And, just. and what is this? That is a 2018. Um, 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 well, we're waiting. Side by side. side, by and side. It, yes, it's an intimidator side by side. Just the families. Uh, that's what it really changed, I think, over the over these last few years here with the women's ministry and everything. Uh, more family oriented here. These family nights every three months. Um, it's kind of the goal we had, and it's, it's awesome to see uh, Jesus Jesus working. Yeah, I can't help but notice how you brought that four wheeler up again. <laughs> don't if, if Philip tries to give you a ticket, don't take it. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think most of us in here, probably maybe not all of us, but have been to other treatment places before we came here. And I, I can say for the ones that I went to, you know, it's, it's such a different experience here um, because we do things like this. We do things for the families. We want families to come out and be a part of the. Uh, you know, restoration process, us be a part of it. And, and we host things where people can come out. You know, I remember one that I went to before here where they might take us out and let us walk two blocks down to the grocery store one day a week and we'd have to walk on a side street, almost like the, the facility that we were at was ashamed of us and wanted to kind of keep us away from the public. So it's awesome to open our doors, welcome everybody in, and everybody just have a good time. We're looking forward to it. Um, Mayor, what about you? What would you say you look forward to the most about events like this? Well, like family night. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's just like what y'all been saying. I mean, when you kind of get together with this ministry, because they all have a little something that they kind of add to something. And this ministry is different because it adds to the urgency and the like immediately. Like whenever Jesus says, you know, go. Um, and do these things, they immediately left, you know. So we immediately put forth action to have things, to do things, um, to have opportunities for family night. Um, we don't take no for an answer. We don't um, just have procrastinate and wait. Um, we do things. Um, and having that opportunity for more um, restoration and more opportunities for healing um, they just, you, you can't really know at the moment when it comes, but after it's over, you can step back and be like, oh, dang, that really worked out in my favor. You know, I actually got to see something. Mm -hmm. 
I guess that's probably what it probably yeah. was all about there. What? Your, your favorite part of Family Night's not when you come into your sound room with a ukulele? <laughs> That's I played the same song for about three years now. Yeah, I wish and in no learn. way is that upsetting. I wish you'd learn something else. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a terrible rendition of the James Bond theme song. We're looking at Twilight Zone. But I like it. Prince Run. It's the pre music. So we had a, a, our instructor meeting this morning, and uh, Perry Ross was actually in charge of that. I thought Brent was maybe going to talk a little bit about this morning. Yeah. Well, being it, you know, uh, seeing seeing through a spiritual lens all week, you know, uh, being a little bit tired and not relying on your flesh to get you through the day, but but relying on what Jesus has for you to motivate you and feed you and push you, um, you know. So noticing what Perry had brought up is, he talked about a, a couple of people that in history in the Bible of, um, well, he talked about Noah and he talked about Moses. He brought them up and he said, why did they do what they did? You know, two different types of people. Um, and then, like, initially I wanted to write down, well, uh, Noah was motivated by being able to save his family. Uh, and then I was also thinking that, well, Moses grew up in Pharaoh's house, so he was in the position where he could stand up to, you know, to what was being, what was going on. So, um, but, but that took, well, it took hearing from God. You know, uh, and that's and that's where the opened up the Bible study to the instructors. It, it, it takes hearing from the Lord to do the thing, and then he well to take a step further. He said, "Then why do you do the things that you do?" Uh, and that us in that room, the leaders of this camp that that help the guys that work by the guys every day. You know that that opened up a huge discussion. Um, it opened up an opportunity to read scripture. To um, you know, it even I, I guess look deeper into the character and say, well, he did this because, um, and then and then try to back that up with uh, your experiences, um, and then say, well, then I can do that in turn because God's no respecter of persons. Yeah. Um, that he still works in us just like he, he used to. Um, you know, he pushes us forward. He, he actually walked with Noah. You know, you know Noah walked with God. So... Um, he had that motivation, and in us, we have the Holy Spirit. So, um, just being able to see that uh, God gives you what you need to be able to fulfill His work. But that that was my uh, that was my view on that. Um, they did have some incentives, you know. Uh, Eric did mention prosper when he shared, and and you know, it's like he's not a prosperity preacher guy, you know. But I, Eric said, "Why did I say prosper?" And I whispered back to him, "I said because you've never lived a better life than you live yeah. today." Right. You know, um, I, I can say that myself. I, I've never had the the job that had a lot more money. I never. I, I owed paychecks before I got paid. I mean, before I got paid, I knew exactly where that was going in hopes that that guy would front me again. <sighs> you know, I, I didn't have a, a a house that I paid for. I paid rent, and I I was back. barely going to do that. <laughs> if, if my dad would give me money to pay rent, I'm paying rent. But every dollar I had was already spoken for before I made it. Um, so, you know, all the money that, that we get as an instructor, which we don't stay here for pay, but we also don't have expense. Yeah. You know, um, the only expense that you have is what you put on yourself. Um, you could eat in the kitchen every day. Well, if you got a wife, you got to buy groceries. So, you know, but anyhow, uh, that being said, we, we have everything that we need here. Um, so, and that makes that easy. It takes it off. It, you don't have to worry about finances here. Um, you know, I, I could just babble on and on about um, how much better life my is. My life is, Christ. Yeah. I mean, it's so good. <laughs> um, and that's why how I like to encourage other guys is that if you have dreams and desires and, and you want to prosper, well, what's stopping you? I yeah. mean, you follow Jesus Christ and you put him first. It says, seek my righteousness. Seek right, you know, the seek my kingdom and, and, and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto you. Um, you know, if you're doing that, you, you will have things come your way. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, you know, I, I, I didn't show up here as a married man. I didn't show up here as a father. I didn't show up here having a house that I could live in. I didn't show up here with more than two changes of clothes. You didn't have friends. Now you do. Man, I didn't have friends. 
That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, you know, if any of my people that I, I grew up with, I, I sent I sent a link out to one of my friends uh, that I grew up with um, on our podcast last week. I didn't hear anything back from him, but um, I pushed my friends to the side. Yeah. I, I didn't the want friends. I didn't want them uh, to see the things that I was doing. You know, I didn't want them to see how I was. Uh, torture myself. I didn't. I didn't want them to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. I wanted that to be for me, and then and then that's what I thought I had to do. I had to live this cursed life because uh, who I was, how I was raised, you know, all these different things. And um, but Jesus called me out of that too. Yeah. You know? And, and that, now you're wanting them to see what you're doing. You well, sent yeah. them links to your podcast. Well, one of them. Well, anyway, I mean, but still. So I've got that brings me to something that I noticed this morning when we were doing our Bible study about Moses. There was a character profile in my Bible that I was reading about, and it was talking about um, Moses was just that guy who would always find himself in situations, you know, where where just chaos or or bad things were just happened around him, and. He always reacted wrong. Well, the Lord shaped him to where his re- it, the same same thing still went on, but his reactions started improving and changing. And how maybe the the instead of the Lord actually changing who we are, us allowing the Lord to I mean He created us right, so allowing the way He created us to be used for the benefit of furthering His will. Yes. You know, and that's kind of what you're talking about, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I, that that that's one of the things that I took away this morning. Yeah, and leading this camp, you know, and I spoke up this morning about saying, you know, are we being uh, good examples to these guys? As far as you know, I think we read in um, Philippians four nine, where it was talking about uh, Paul saying, you know. Look at me, do what I do, do what I say, you know. Look at us. Look at us, <laughs> yes. But, you know, are we living a life, you know, no, we're not perfect, but, you know, if I tell a guy, I got, like yesterday, there's something came up with a guy, and he, he was having problems with a wife and, and a girlfriend and, and debt and everything outside that mailbox. And, I, you know, I could tell him, in boldness, man, you need to forget about everything outside of here and use this time, this season of your life here at this ministry for what it's set up to be. It's a refuge out here in the middle of nowhere where you can be still and know who God is. And that's so much easier said than done. Well, yeah, but I can say it in boldness because that's exactly what I did. There, you've done it. You yeah. Had, you, yeah, yeah. And I've lived through it and, and come out on the other side, and then all I did was follow Christ and be still. That's it. Got myself out of the way. You had to shower first. Well, yeah, thanks. I did shower. I just didn't fix my hair that morning. <laughs> You know, I, I also thought this morning when Perry was talking about, um, have you ever heard somebody say, do as I say, not as I do? Monkey see, monkey do. You know what I mean? I mean I, and, and I thought about how much the concept of what those words mean coming out of somebody's mouth has changed for me. Um, I, I want to be somebody that's not going to say something for you to do, but sets a standard or... or you know, puts those actions into practice, you know, to follow. Not, hey, I'm going to tell you what to do, but you won't see me doing it. You know, so. It's like Top Gun. He can talk the talk. I don't know. No, it's, uh, oh, what is that movie? Bad Boys? No, they're in, uh, they're in boot camp. and it's Major Pain? No. no, I know it's a good movie. He says you can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? He's talking it's to Full Joker. Metal Jacket. Yeah, he's talking to yeah. Joker. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, yeah. talk the talk, yeah. but do you walk the walk? Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. Right in the pile. So that's what it makes me think of. Do you talk the talk and do you walk the walk? Because if, right. if you walk it out what you're saying, then people can follow what you're doing. Right, and I think people are going to be a whole lot more inclined to follow you if you're saying something like that if they also see you exhibiting those qualities in your own life. Yeah, and they know you. Right. It's like, it's, right. you know, how you follow something that you don't know. Right. Same like way with Christ. How do you know? How are you going to believe and follow Christ if you don't know him and have a personal relationship with him? Well, the same way we got to be open books to these yeah. guys. Yeah. But, you know, at, at the same time, you also got to remind the guys that, you know, we, this place, John 3.16, took you in when nobody else wanted you. Yeah. So that shows that we love you, mm-hmm. you know, and then that's how you follow people you do not know. Because they don't know us. They're, they're in the first week here. Yeah. They're just saying, man, I'm here because my family's kind of making me be here. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, because I, I need my life to get better. I need to quit using drugs and alcohol. And then all of a sudden we start, we don't teach any classes over how to get off drugs. We only teach classes on how to follow Christ. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you see a guy that finally gets it. And we have a resident right now that finally got it. Like, 
And they ask questions like, so, you don't, there's nothing in it for you? Like, you don't, you don't get paid very much, but yet you stay out here and do this, you're doing this for me, you know. And then they start really getting that. Well, that's, that's where the paycheck's at, and, and seeing yeah. the guy's lives change. Yes, yeah. yeah. so, that's the reward. Yeah, that is. And uh, having the same, same, same ability of freedom that we were right. offered. Right, I saw a quote one time that said, you've not lived until you've done something for somebody that cannot repay yeah. you. Yeah. That's in the Bible. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know I read some. Yeah. I know I read it somewhere. Well, there was a picture of a guy with his uh, a boot that? and a little uh, dra a, a waterlogged kitten hanging onto his boot. I don't, you know, it on says the canvas or something. it says that pure religion is taking care of orphans and widows. Yeah, undefiled religion is yeah. taking care of orphans and widows, which means giving things to people that can't pay you back. That's right. Jesus Christ did just that. Yeah. We couldn't possibly repay him for, mm -hmm. for what he's done. We can, well, he, he can all we can do is live up to what we've already obtained. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Hey, we're, we're talking God's word in here. And That's right. Making it fun. I was, I was, I was, I was <laughs> honestly seeing a Chris Miller really asleep. I, 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 I wish you could zoom in on my face. I'm just like, oh, dude, he's a statue. Of Miller's, Miller's under the weather. Just, just a little bit. Yeah. Got the flu. Put the, put the camera on you. Let me, let me oh, come that. on, man. Come on. Look at that paleness. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a little bit of the flu bug. But he's, he's staying strong. He almost passed out yesterday. I had to bring him up Gatorade. But, other than that. but I would add something to that. You know, uh, you know why did Noah and Moses do what they did? You know, and I think of uh, perseverance because any time that I stop persevering, I start doing the things that I want to do and I mess up. And so this ministry helps make you persevere or you're going to be in your flesh. So you persevere every single day and then it produces something. That's something that we didn't even know that we even needed. Right, integrity and character, mm -hmm. uh, the things that money can't buy, um, and but man, trying to get the new guys to kind of understand that is tough. Sometimes like banging your head against the wall. Yeah, but just tell them just wait. It's worth it. Just wait. <laughs> no. I think we all came here because of a severe lack of structure in our lives. Yeah, and that's what makes it so shocking when you first get here is that structure. But that's exactly what you need. That's what you're wanting. That's what you're seeking. Is, yeah. Is, there's something yeah. greater than yourself. And you got to settle somebody down first before you can even get them to think about paying attention and listening to a way to change their life. Look at us. Yeah. Look at us. That's Acts chapter 3. I gave a Bible study over that one day and yelled at everybody. And then I had other people yell at everybody. It's, yeah. it's pretty impactful and moving. Got quiet. Got real quiet. Whenever you see that the Holy Spirit used Peter and John, not necessarily just Jesus, to help a lame beggar yeah. walk again. That's right. And that's how he uses us. Is, is by us the guys we get their attention because we live a, a life for Christ we have an authority for Christ to help men come out of a pit um, so whenever it is that they're able to pay attention to us they start learning how to walk again you know? um, so the work of Christ is to help the blind see and do many different things um but, but to do his work is to help the, those that cannot pay you back. Right. You know? And we make mistakes along oh, the way. Yeah. You know, um, We're human. Yeah, and, and we, don't, we, we want to be seen when we make a mistake, own it up to it and learn it from it, because I think that feeds into, you know, we've got to say, well, man, you know, I don't have to be perfect, you know? Yeah. Um, man will follow, you know, I'll follow somebody when they show me their heart or show me their per imperfections. Right. You know? Absolutely. And then how they overcome those and how they work on getting better. Yeah. You know, they don't get better, then I'm like, well, kind of lose respect for them. Yeah. But we can't follow somebody that won't try. You know? What, what did I say the other day? It was uh, God can help a failure, but he can't help a quitter. That's what yeah. you said. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you so, uh, and then you can. had me kind of second, yeah, <laughs> second can. guessing that. You know? can, but I guess while you're He chooses quit. not to. Yeah. Well, you know, he gives us a choice. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're not willing to make the right choice or you're not going to make the right choice, then he 
I give you this day life and death. You That's know? right. I mean, the, uh, blessings and curses. That's right. And um, so it's up to you as an individual yeah. to do to be able to be used by God, to be able to be a, uh, a vessel of the Holy Spirit. Um, it, it's up to us. So uh, you out there watching, it's up to you. Right. You know, mm-hmm. it's up to you. So in that, Philip, how would you encourage the viewer for this week? Encourage the viewer? Yeah, the people watching. People watching? You know, there's hundreds of them. Thousands. Well, it was like 4,000 people watched the, the pilot. podcast, the pilot. Well, and I, and I want to say, before you answer that, there was somebody that commented on our last one that said, hey, you guys, I'm, thank you so much for doing this. I've been struggling. I was having her. This is exactly what I needed to see. Y'all laughing and having a good time. So it's... It's making a difference. Yeah. Yeah. And then one did share, Shane shared uh, his experience with uh, how was he encouraged as the new guy. He said that he had a, a guy in his house, uh, Lawson, yeah. tell him quit tomorrow. Yeah. You know, I was able to comment. I was like, man, that's a Navy SEAL saying. Yeah, you're going. Don't quit, yeah. Yeah, you quit, don't quit when you're on the bottom. Why don't you quit when you're on top? Yeah, right. Wait till tomorrow. Yeah. Go home tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Next day, go home tomorrow. Right. He made it all the way through. Shane graduated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We yeah. love you, Shane. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Plumber. <laughs> Big plumber. But uh, no, I encourage them out there, man. Uh, my encouragement is step aside, surrender. You know, if you're struggling, there's a reason you're struggling, and it's 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 because you hadn't surrendered, surrendered at all. Um, you know, and then if you need to come here, you know, we're at 75 Home Road. 75 Holmes Road here in Charlotte, um, man or woman now. Um, I thought it was funny this morning. Uh, Perry, in his Bible study, was uh, saying, you know, Noah never had uh, seen rain. Mm-hmm. You know, and we have never seen for 20 something years women out here. And he said, but Noah, he built that boat, not seeing rain. He said, well, men are still there building a building, never yeah. seen a woman up here. Yeah, you know, and so I wrote down on a piece of paper, I said, men, the Noah building. <laughs> yeah. But, Female boat builder. Yeah. 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 So I thought that was. Uh, I sure am glad my wife does not have Facebook. <laughs> I'm sure I link with her. Yeah. yeah. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Yeah. 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 Um, one, one of the things that I, uh, I thought about um, encouragement wise is it was always a big deal for me was I fully believe that when I would isolate tough things started happening to me and I would get by myself the devil had me right where he wanted me mm-hmm. you know where I wouldn't reach out and try to connect with everybody I would withdraw you know and, and, and get away from other people Man, that's, that's one of the devil's best tools is to just get you by yourself. That way you can continue because we can beat ourselves up worse than anybody else can. Um, so if you're having a tough time with anything out there, as uncomfortable as it may seem, seek out some people that are going to lift you up. You know, um, That's often one of the hardest steps, but one of the most beneficial steps is to get, you know, reach out to somebody. You know, get around some people, some friends, some church people, things like that. And and we're always here. Always have the lights on here. Motel 6? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm. Tom gonna, Odette. We'll leave the light on. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess that's about all the time we've got for today. Do you want to go? go? Or me. Oh, well, y'all, yeah. y'all go. Out You're out a face. Face. horrible. Host. Yeah. Two Mike CC. I'm not going to. All right. Oh, you got yeah, two Mike. Uh, uh, so my encouragement for you this week is uh, um, what kind of sources of encouragement are you seeking? Um, you know, are you seeking the encouragement from your favorite bands that you always listen to on Spotify? Are you seeking encouragement from things of the world or are you seeking spiritual encouragement? Um, you know, I, uh, I put myself around people that are pretty encouraging. Uh, I get to spend a lot of time around people that, that don't let me um, uh, just just be a, a sourpuss really you know I, they, they, they're not gonna let me be negative and and i don't really want to be you know i like to joke around and have fun but um i started listening to podcasts again about um spiritual health and, and physical health and how they go together um so feeling some conviction on that um how i can be uh better myself always improving 
Um, you know, if God gave you a Ferrari, God gave you a body that's capable of achieving great and mighty things, and yet you're not willing to do what it takes to, uh, to use it. You know, in fact, you're, you're not taking care of it at all. So, um, you know, just, just feeling like I need to get out and do some things, um, but never getting at a place where I don't feel like I could be encouraged anymore. You know, so that I am starting to look to other sources, God's Word, uh, podcasts that I'm listening to, um, live stories shared. Um, you know, I, I'm seeking a lot of these different things that, that should encourage me, that, not, that doesn't want, you know, I don't get locked down in myself. Um, because when I start leaning on my own understanding, like Mary said, I start messing up bad. So um, just, always, just always looking for an opportunity for, for Jesus to use an encouraging word to help convict me uh, to continue to be better. Um, so I encourage you to do the same thing. Um, start looking out for uh, God's word and in prayer and in meditation to, to find ways to be better. That's right. Oh, so last but not least. Yeah, that's right. Um, before CC signs off, yeah. Prematurely again. Uh, <laughs> like, it's, you know, it's so hard to try to tell you that you need to know something that you don't know that you need to know it until you know that you don't know it. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of hard. You know, it's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. So, if you need some encouragement, you need some advice, just come see us here at at Charlotte, Arkansas. Um, we'll be happy to to share we, with you the life that we have here and share with you um, some of the things that we've been through. Um, it's definitely something that's hard to get your point across in podcasts, but I think we're doing a great job, and I appreciate you guys so much. Um, kind of, you know, the glue that holds everything together. Uh, we could not do this on our own, and... Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to this weekend, seeing some graduates, um, seeing some new guys, seeing some, um, you know, just some new faces around, you know. Graduates don't come, it's like we get the same 20 all the time, you know, so I'm looking forward to seeing a couple of different ones. So, better be here. Yeah, 4.30. 4.30. You know, when, when he talks about um, seeing the graduates, something that I've been wanting to mention, too, is that we'd love for you guys to comment on, you know, our podcast and let us know things that you'd like to hear about, you know, maybe topics, suggest topics, things you'd like to hear uh, from out there, you know, what's going on in here, what you'd like to hear us talk about. Um, we're always looking for material and things to discuss, mm -hmm. and uh, we welcome any feedback, any uh, suggestions, uh, any stories? Yeah. Hey, one thing I would like to say, I did get a text this morning while in instructor Bible study from Josie Roper. So he takes, said, me and Coleman are sitting here in Bible study, and I was just thinking about every Thursday, Mentor, you would schedule concrete on Thursdays because that's their sleeping days. Yeah. He's like, well, yeah, of course I'm going to do it on Thursdays. When you are sleeping, you're going Get up and come to work. Right. <laughs> so that was one funny thing, you know. They, you just get these random texts, you know, periodically uh, from graduates. So next Saturday, Josie, you can show up and we can pour some concrete. Amen. Right. <laughs> yeah. We've been pouring it. Boy, Saturday and Thursday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so what do y'all think? You want to wrap up now? In a blanket? In a Taco? Bagel dog? Bag. Hot dog? Pig in the blanket. Pig Thank you for watching. Yeah, so Thanks we are we are excited, y'all. <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing everyone yeah, we do. tomorrow. Um, That's right. Yeah. Like, share, comment. <laughs> we thank you so much for tuning in to John three sixteen Ministry Podcast. That's right. We Get love you, CC. We love you, and Jesus loves you. Amen. 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 <laughs>